Hello and welcome to another episode of John's Puzzles, episode three in fact. Um, thanks so much for everyone who's got in touch um, from the last two episodes. It's been really great to hear from you. Thank you for letting me know how you're finding them. Um, particularly for those people who've got in touch um, talking about either how much they've enjoyed the puzzles or giving me um, some pointers on how to make better videos. I'm going to try and make uh, the audio a little bit better than has happened previously. We're using a, a technical term, which I hope I'm pronouncing this right, is talking louder. That's what I'm going to try. So hopefully this is a bit clearer. Let me know um, what you think. Um, today we're looking at an absolutely phenomenal puzzle type. It is apps genuinely kind of brilliant. And it's called Stitches. And this puzzle was created by a guy called At Atanas Georgiev. I hope I pronounced that right. Who is also largely responsible for the website that we've been using in the previous two episodes. It's not the only puzzle website, but it's the one that um, has a really good functionality. I hope you've, you've kind of found that as well. And um, they, they host a load of really good puzzles. Um, he's a kind of remarkable puzzle designer, and he came up with this, with this himself, and I'm fairly sure you can't find this anywhere else. So yeah, it's a, it's a very unique puzzle and a, a diamond in the rough. So I hope you find it um, exciting and enjoyable. I warn you, it's not for the faint-hearted, though it can be small, it really does pack a punch, and um, it's somewhat mind-bending, but also very, very satisfying to solve. Um, I've only really scratched the surface of the solving methods that can be used to solve this. So I'll do some quick tips on this video, but if you notice anything that you think would be helpful, then just please get in touch. Um, I'd really value your help, to be honest. Um, I'm just getting to grips with parts of how to solve this. Um, and I didn't want to give you too much on this video because I hope that you can enjoy uh, figuring out some of the logic for yourself. But anyway, without further ado, let's have a look at it. So um, the rules, as usual, are fairly simple. Um, so um, you basically have to stitch together all of these different areas. So I'm going to use these little colors at the top just to show you. So I'm going to pick green. So this, this is one area and then this area is in blue. This will be an entirely different area here. Um, this yellow one will be a different area, etc., etc. And you can, I'm just going around and coloring them so that you can see the different areas, which um, can be fun, but also can be helpful. And what you want to avoid doing is doing what I've just done there, which is obviously coloring in two that are next to each other the same, because you will notice that you're going to have to stitch them together. And to stitch them together, it's useful to realize that they're different. And so I've colored them there, which might be a helpful thing. Um, how do you make stitches? Well, to make a stitch, you um, you make a hole. So I've like connected, uh, clicked on this little the kind of hole setting rather than the color setting at the top, and you can click anywhere and a hole is made. And you can put holes wherever you like. Look at me putting holes in lots of places. Oh, there's a stitch. Gives a bit away for you. Um, however, as you'll see around the edges, there are these numbers. And so if I put a hole here, you're like, oh, it's gone red. And as we know, red is bad. And red is bad because the numbers tell you how many holes are in each row and each column. And so that's got zero. So if I put a stitch here, it's bad because zero is, is the, well, because one is more than zero. I was going to say because zero is less than one. That is also true. Um, but you can obviously put them here, well not there, but like there for example, um, because this, this column is going to have six and this row is going to have four. So that's how you make holes. And to make a stitch, you connect two, uh, two holes. And stitches have to go across borders. You can't do them internally in a shape. So if I put two holes here, I can't make a stitch there. It just disappears. But if I put two holes here, I can make a stitch like that. So that's how the holes work, and that's how the stitches work. No stitch can go in the same hole, so I can't put a... For example, a hole here, I can't make a stitch like this here. Oh, I'll make a stitch, there you go. And I can't now make a stitch going into this one here. Uh, I can't do both. As you, as you see, it doesn't let me do that. A quick way to make a stitch is actually to click on the line. And if you are using a mouse for doing this on a computer, you can also right click to put X's where you know there won't be holes, or you can right click on a line to put a red line, which is actually kind of helpful sometimes to show that there can't be um there can't be a stitch going across that line. And without further ado, to solve the thing, you just have to make sure that each area, so each colored area like I've done there, is connected with at least, well, one stitch, exactly one stitch, such that 
you're kind of minimizing the amount of stitches you have to do to make this into um, a nice blanket, but also that every piece is connected to every adjacent piece. There's no like floppy bits, I guess. Um, it wouldn't actually stop floppy bits, I suppose, when you actually see where the stitches go, but that's not the point. The point is each area has to be connected to one stitch. And so that is how stitches work. Um, and I'm gonna run through two, um, two small ones for you um, and hopefully that will help you get a grip on how to solve them and then I will set you some challenges for those people who like to be set challenges um, but feel free to explore yourself um, this kind of wonderful puzzle type. Right so how do we solve this? Well um, first thing to look at with anything with numbers is to look at the extremes so it's a seven by seven um, one stitch puzzle that, that you can have puzzles that you know you need two stitches per area and other things like that but um, we're just looking at one stitch puzzles and there's seven cells across so firstly you can look at these zeros and go okay i know that there's not going to be any stitches in any rows with the zeros or any holes because zero means no holes so there we go we can get rid of all of those um we know that there cannot be any stitches in those in those holes sorry we know there can be a holes in those areas and no holes also means no stitches um, another top tip is that when you know that every area has to be connected to another area, if there's only one space where an area connects to another area, like this red shape and this orange shape here, we know that there must be a stitch there because it's the only place that can be a stitch to connect them. Um, and then you could say that you could now look at this green shape on the left and go, okay, well, because I can't connect uh, the stitch across. As I might have wanted to before, um, the only space that I can connect this green shape here to this bottom red shape is with a stitch that goes like this. Um, and in doing so, we've placed two stitches. Um, some other things that you can look at, again, looking at the extremes of the numbers, the numbers around the edges are um, a very helpful place to start, as well as where where where's the only places things connect can connect. So this number six because we know that it's a seven by seven grid, we know that each of these spaces must have a hole in it. And even though we don't know where the stitches are gonna go, we know that they must all have holes in. Now, um, as I mentioned, you can't have internal stitches, which makes, uh, makes this next bit um, helpful. So this top hole here, um, you know that it can't be a stitch that goes down connecting this hole to this hole um, just below it because that would be internal. However, there's nowhere else that hole can be stitched to. So there must be a hole here. And then because we know that there's, there's um, you can't just have a hole with no stitch in it. All holes are used. Um, that must be a stitch there. Sorry, I might get like muddled on the terminology as I go through because I've got like whole stitches on areas and that's three whole words that I have to think about. Um, in going down, if I know there's, if I'm looking at this next hole, um, if the only two places it can go is either across, like I've drawn there, but looking at the number one, that goes red, so we know it's not going across, but also it would be an internal stitch, so it's got to go down like this. Um, this red one could go across. Um, but we know that this this one below it can't go down because that would be an internal stitch again. Look, if I put a hole here, it can't go across. And because all the stitches are orthogonal, um, it's mentioned in the rules, but I, I should have mentioned that. You can't do like diagonal stitches and they have to can only be one cell to one cell. They can't go right across the, the way, as it were. So this must go down, which leaves this hole at the bottom. The only place that I can go is across. And now we've kind of fulfilled this six number here, which is pleasing, and this three number. So when we fulfilled the three, we know there's three holes now in this um, this row. We can fill that in with crosses. Um, we need another two in this number five, and there's only two spaces left. So we know they're going to have two holes here, and those holes can't be connected because they are internal. So that means we're going to have holes here and here, and they must create stitches going across. Um, and it is just so satisfying. I like it is genuinely kind of a very wonderful thing to do this. Um, the logic is is really just 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 beautiful. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you could look at now, but to give you some more logic to help you as you're solving these yourself, um, if you look at this number five at the top, 
um, right in the middle, you can count how many holes there are in this in this column already. There's one, two, three, four. So we need to put another stitch in. But there's only two places that can go. And if I put it here, there's nowhere it can go now. As well as it breaking this one at the side, it can't go down or across because they're all internal, which means that there must be a hole here. And the only place that can go is here next to it. So therefore, there's a stitch there. And that fulfills the five, so that can't be um, a stitch next to it. Um, some other logic well this one has already been fulfilled so we can put crosses next to that and um this four here there's only two places that you can put stitches now where the stitches can actually work and so sorry two holes where the stitches can work so therefore that must be a stitch there which connects the green and the yellow that connects the green and the blue that connects the blue and the red the red and the yellow the yellow and the blue so you can see how these are all connected up but if I was to try and make a stitch here, for example, look, it goes red because we already have a blue connected to this yellow. So we know that there is not a stitch there. So if I wanted to, I could make this red instead and say, look, there's not a stitch there. Or I can do that with crosses. Um, this means that we're pretty much just looking at these two uh, rows and columns and everything else has basically been filled in for us so the only thing to do is put a stitch here to finish and that is it we have finished our first stitch puzzle um, it didn't take us 32 minutes I've just had this running for a while but if I click check I'm hoping that it says congratulations you've solved the puzzle wonderful news um, I'll just quickly show you um, uh, another one because that one was relatively easy um, so here is um, here's another one. This is a bit more problematic, as you can see. Um, it's still classed as a normal. I'm not sure how the categorizations work, except for when I've tried hard, I'm very aware <laughs> that they are hard. Um, so I've been sticking to normal mostly. Um, and there isn't an easy. So that kind of shows you what these puzzles are like. Um, so there's no zeros to start with here. So we've got to, got to be a bit canny. Um, and one thing I've noticed is that if you have a one in a row or column, that means that these lines here can never be stitches. Because if you do put a stitch here, it's going to break the one because there's two holes now in that column. So I can put lines on these. I can kind of red out these places. Um, and that actually <laughs> it took me a while to figure that out. But that is a very helpful thing. Um, I also know that this can never be a, never be a hole because if there's a hole, where is it going to get stitched to? Um, this can never be a hole, because if it's a hole, where's it going to get stitched to? That can never be a hole. Um, this one here can't be, because if it was a hole, we've kind of got rid of the uh, the possible stitching places side to side, and it can't go up and down, so we know that that can't be a hole. Um, where else can't be a hole? Um, maybe another place that I can't see at the moment, but for now we'll kind of leave it there. Okay. Oh. This one here can't be a hole. That's helpful um, because, again, if it's a hole, there's no place either side of it where you can put a stitch. Right. Given that, um, and you're looking at this five at the bottom, there's only five spaces now that are left available for, for holes. You've got to be careful sometimes because sometimes it will put a stitch in where you're not necessarily sure there's a stitch. So, OK, great. So there's our five holes on the bottom row and we're really getting going now um, because this hole in the bottom can only be stitched up like that. Um, so that should be a not a, whole, not a stitch. Um, so that's a, that's a good start with our five. Um, this could go across or it could go up. We're not sure because it can go like this or it can go like this. And it's not necessarily obvious which way that goes because you can't kind of rule stuff out looking across. Um, this one can never go up, um, but it doesn't matter because it can go across in both directions. So. Um, I'm just going to leave them there as holes for now and um, continue with the rest of the puzzle and see what else I can see. So, where would we go next? Well, um, so there's a three there, there's a one here. Okay, so that one could be going across here, but that's not necessarily going to be the case. Um, yeah, hopefully you can see at this point that it becomes less obvious. So now using the other trick, not looking at the numbers, I'm going to look at are there any places where one of them is just connected to another one and it's the only place that they are connected. So here, the shape. So yeah, as I said earlier, um, sometimes it can be helpful to colour in the shapes and I didn't do that on this. And look, it's caused me problems already. So I'm going to colour in some of these shapes 
because it makes it easier for me to see them because otherwise my brain starts to go all fuzzy not being able to kind of see where all the shapes are so here we go oh isn't that so much nicer man kind of, maybe they should start with that anyway so now we can see this red shape connects to that blue shape so i can put a stitch there because that's the only place that they connect um we know there's got to be a stitch in either um uh, how do i how can i show this basically in one of these four squares because it's the only space where the yellow and the green connect um, but we know that there can't be one because of this red line so therefore there must be a stitch here which is helpful getting us some stitches and now we've filled in the two for that row and the two for this column which is good news um this yellow has got to connect to this blue somehow that can either be done there or across there or down here okay that's not necessarily immediately obvious this white has got to connect to the screen but it could be on this next one up this white's got to connect to this blue i guess that could be here as well as any of the other places okay so not necessarily sure that clears anything up for us moving forward um so what what can we do next we've solved that two we solved this two at the top we need to put one in in this row okay great so if we look at this this row here um we know that you can't put a stitch here because it won't be able to stitch to anything um you could put a stitch here you could put a stitch here but you'll never be able to put a stitch here and you'll never be able to put a stitch there okay so we know it's either going to be going down like this or down like that um that's helpful because it means that we know that there's going to be at least a hole in this space or a hole in this space and that means that this number two is uh, is actually number one um when we know that one of the holes is coming here and here because that's a one there's only one hole left we know that there can never be stitches that go across so we can put black marks in these spaces now of course it could be both of those um but we don't know yet and because we can put black marks in here we know that neither of these can be stitches either and it's slow as i say it's slow it's slow progress on some of these um but um but we you know you will get there eventually and uh yeah i'm hoping by showing you that slow progress at times you won't necessarily feel as disheartened if you uh, you struggle initially like i have been doing all right let's let's keep let's keep looking for some more gems of how we can solve this okay so there's got to be four left in here now this one can never be a hole because um it can't connect to either of the other two because they're both internal which means that all three of these have got to be holes and that's good because we know that there's going to be at least a hole here or a hole here which means that this isn't a hole which we probably could have worked out anyway um this has therefore got to be a stitch the only way a stitch can be we know that this is a hole so therefore this is a stitch um that gives us almost four and this is the only place that can now be stitched there we need three in this column ah oh, look at the logic the logic just kind of bounces off itself which is really really nice it kind of rebounds um so i say that i hope i'm doing this right if i'm not then uh the logic hasn't rebounded or it's rebounded back into me but yeah these are now the only places that stitches can be and we can rule those out um there's three there which rules out all of these places um there must be three so there's got to be uh, there must be three in this column here so there's got to be a hole here and a hole here so there's a stitch there uh, that puts four across in this row already and we haven't got two in here yet but we have got three in there and we haven't got four in here so that's a stitch that's not a stitch i'm going to click check and it's done in seven minutes 30 seconds i'm going to be honest that's <laughs> not that bad a time um but you can you can have a go um I will put in the column in the comments, sorry, as I always do, um, the challenge, which is a uh, a seven by seven um, normal one, just like this. So you can have a go at that. Let me know what time you get. Um, and again, shout outs for anybody who puts up a particularly quick time. Or in fact, to be honest, if you just let me know how how you got on with it, that's that's all, I, all I'm really interested in. Don't don't worry too much about the competition. Um, but there is also a special competition again this week. So many people seem to enjoy um, doing the 25 by 25 light battle puzzle that I thought I'd I'd share this one with you. Um, I haven't been able to do this. 
I tried, I gave it a good amount of time um, yesterday and uh, I, I couldn't do it. Um, I'm going to give it another go before our next video so that hopefully I can kind of show you. Um, but this guy is the monthly challenge and it is enormous. Um, I think it's 20 by 20 if I counted rightly. One, two, three, yeah, it's 20 by 20. Um, and it's difficult. I'll be honest, it, it's difficult. So um, if you've got a lot of time or you really enjoy a challenge, have a go at it. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and again, if anyone sends me a completed picture of this, um, it's not like if I look at it, I'm not going to be able to have a go at solving it myself because frankly, I'm not going to remember it. But do have a go at it. It is um, <laughs> it's an absolute behemoth of a puzzle. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Um, if you want to subscribe or uh, join John's Puzzle Club on Facebook, feel free to. Um, it'll probably be a quicker way of you knowing when the puzzles come out. Um, and there's probably a link on the page now that you can click to do that if you'd like. It also helps me to know how many people are interested, um, which helps me to decide how many more, more of these videos I'm going to put out um, in the long run, but also the frequency of them. So um, if you do like them, please feel free to like this on Facebook or on YouTube. That, again, just kind of helps me to know how, how many people are enjoying them and therefore kind of how much time I'm going to put into them. But thanks for watching and uh, happy puzzling and I will see you soon.